since 2014, the, the drone technology, the software in particular, have, has really made leaps and bounds uh, changes. And in the beginning, it was v real finicky. You, you, you had a lot of glitching, you had a lot of stitching errors, and just the data wasn't uh, as easily available to get to my farmers. My main objective with owning this company is to help small family farmers in, in California stay in business an extra year. A couple of very smart um, engineering entrepreneur students came up with this idea to build a drone that could actually go out, fly, land and traverse fields. And we thought, look, we've got a drone that could fly and drive, so we could take it one step further and collect data from the ground to complement the aerial data. So what we did is we used some of that money that we got from Prove Lab to fund a trip to the World Ag Expo in 2018, where we solely went there to conduct research. And all we did is we interviewed about 30, 30 to 50 farmers, simply asking the question, you know, here's the technology that we have, how do you think this can be useful? Saying no to drones is not the right solution if you want to be competitive in a global marketplace uh, because every other nation on the earth is maximizing the utility of drones and it's incumbent upon the United States to try to compete in that global marketplace. We're managing around 5,000 acres of grapes and um, nearly impossible to actually walk that amount of acreage uh, and to get a bead as to what was going on. It was kind of like throwing a, a, a dart. If you were able to apply or deploy three or four drones uh, that could do that work for you or along with you, um, the possibilities are just endless. Production funding for American Grown, My Job Depends on Ag, provided by James G. Parker Insurance Associates, helping to protect and grow Valley Agribusiness in California for over 40 years. By the Gar and Esther Tatillion Charitable Foundation, a legacy of giving to support the people that make agriculture grow. Farms feed families, public television feeds minds. By Brent, professional agriculture supporting the heroes that work hard to feed a hungry world every day. By Unwired Broadband, today's internet for rural Central California, keeping Valley agriculture connected since 2003. By Harris Farms, a tradition of working forward to protect the future of water, ranches, and farms in California and beyond. And by Valley Air Conditioning and Repair, family owned for a half century dedicated to supporting Valley Agriculture and the families that grow our nation's food. At the beginning, it wasn't really a sure thing. I didn't know how the tech would play out or what would have come from it. Um, but I knew there was something there and I knew there was a use. And luckily I've had some very nice farmers who have really allowed me to experiment on their ranches year in and year out the past three and a half years um, to collect a lot of data to then now be able to show more ranchers the capability of, of the drones and what we're able to see and uh, help them with. Precision Ag has been in, in existence for quite some time. Uh, it's got quite a big foothold in the Midwest and we're starting to see it more and more in California. Um, the more regulations are, are put in place, it's kind of putting a damper on the way we can do business here. So we're having to do a lot more with less um, as time goes by. This is the GPS and the sunshine locator and sensor. This will capture, this is five lenses, and this will capture uh, color bands that are not visible to the human eye. We're setting up uh, the module here, the controller and the flight controls, which will give this coordinates and a grid to fly on. So we're just getting this warmed up. I'm gonna set this landing pad up right now and put the craft on it, and then we're gonna go through our pre-flight. 18 to 20 miles an hour. Image capture started. There she goes. 
So in 2014, I finished my college career at UC Davis, where I went to school and played baseball, and came home to work for the family company, Wolf Construction. And my father one day asked me uh, to look into getting a drone to do inspections for roofing. Um, instead of us climbing up, we should use a drone and, and analyze new, new data with, uh, with the technology that is coming out. So I dove into the drone industry, started researching, and picked up a couple drones. And in 2014 onward, that's how we started doing all of our roofs, uh, roof inspections. If you would ask me, 20, you know, in 2010, if uh, I'd be running, I'd, I'd be running drones in 2019. Um, I probably wouldn't have believed you. So the, the hardest challenge we face today is just being able to reach each farmer. The, in the past, the way they would survey their, their fields were by satellite and by airplane. Um, both of those are equally, equally good and you can see many things, um, but the airplane gets expensive and it's not as easily just, hey, come fly my ranch, you know, as we can with a drone. So it'll be flying at 300 feet. It'll make uh, two, 10 passes back and forth uh, and take about 200 to 250 photos, which we within will stitch together to make one complete photo. And then from there, we can apply the algorithms um, for the health analysis uh, stage of the data. So I've been in agriculture my entire life and my family decided to sell the last 80 acre uh, ranch about two years ago. Uh, we were farming uh, table grapes down in Kern County, uh, just outside of Bakersfield. And a couple years ago the well went out and it just did not pencil out to spend a quarter million dollars to develop a new well. And it was not sustainable because there was no irrigation district water on top of that. So the family had elected to go ahead and, and just, just sell and, and get out of farming entirely. And that left me in a spot to where I wasn't in a position to buy um, a new place to farm. So I had to get a little creative and start my own business. And that's where we are today. It was it was really tough. I mean, we you know fourth generation, and we were thinking we we were gonna go keep farming for quite some time, and, and that's all I've ever done. Um, and having to walk away from that was a real emotional thing, and. So I had to get creative real fast because there's no way I was gonna quit agriculture. That's all I've ever known and all I've ever done. So in eight, uh, in 10 minutes, we were able to fly this with a drone and do 18 acres worth of imaging, which would have taken two guys on quads to do about six hours worth of work to inspect just the drip lines, not the overall health of the tree. And in that 10 minutes, we're able to get a snapshot basically in real time of what the trees are doing. And that will enable uh, the grower and I and the agronomist and the farm manager to make appropriate decisions if we need to make any decisions. This layer you can, um, you can see just the canopy of the tree in standard red, green, and blue color. And the soil is now showing in these, looks like a thermal layer here. And based off this, we can tell that we have above average growth on these trees in here. And it's probably because they just came off of a 12 hour irrigation set. And then in here, we've got a little bit below average growth in this area here. I had to identify a need. And by, by doing that, I, I asked a lot of my neighbors, a lot of farmers, what, what they needed and what they were missing uh, from a service provider. And a lot of the regulations that are coming down uh, today are not really intended to fix any problems, but we're having to do a lot more with a lot less, whether it be fertilizer or water or labor or whatever. It's just so much harder now. And, and, and by having this company now, I'm able to assist growers, a lot of family growers, uh, in making better decisions and, and spending a little bit less money.
a couple of very smart um, engineering entrepreneur students came up with this idea to build a drone that could actually go out, fly, land and traverse fields. Um, I got in contact with him through my son because my son is also an engineer at Cal Poly School of Engineering and my role was to help them to get this off the ground. And since then I've actually taken on a much more um, larger role in the organization by helping them to actually get this into commercial hands. So when Jacob actually first came to me to bring me on board with this project, he presented it as just a drone that could fly and drive and told me it had applications in film and security. It wasn't until our advisor, Graham Doig, actually told us to go meet with one of the department heads in agriculture uh, that we actually decided to turn this into an agricultural project. So what happened was we met with one of the heads of uh, the agriculture department and he educated us on what drones are being used for right now which is like the GNDVI and the NDVI mapping and we thought look we've got a drone that could fly and drive so we could take it one step further and collect data from the ground to complement the aerial data. <laughs> Flame, right. oh, the light. My Kavi, you having fun there? So cool. <laughs> Kavi and I obviously don't come from an agriculture background, so we had to do some research and some pretty significant research in order to find out how can a drone that is driving through the aisles of crops actually be useful for farmers. So what we did is we used some of that money that we got from Prove Lab to fund a trip to the World Ag Expo in 2018, where we solely went there to conduct research. And all we did is we interviewed about 30, 30 to 50 farmers, simply asking the question, you know, here's the technology that we have, how do you think this can be useful? And every single response we got back was, if you could complement the aerial data that is used right now with current drones, with the ability to go and analyze those areas from the ground where the actionable data is obtained currently, that would be a huge step in the industry that has never happened before, and it would really revolutionize agriculture. You know, attending the World Ag Expo and just seeing, you know, all the different like complexities and like what exactly they're doing with their crops, and you know, understanding salinity and the soil and water content, just all those different metrics and like how much they play a big part in like what the crops are actually doing. Um, I've definitely seen like just how difficult it is to actually work in the ag space, and I think it's very, uh, very interesting to see like how this is going to help. Come on, buddy. Um, up until June, um, the drone was still part of the Cal Poly incubator program. And then I got involved and uh, set up a corporation. That corporation was set up in June. And then from there, we started taking it out into the marketplace. When I woke up, when I woke up, you were just a trace in my blood. So, from a crack in the sea, jars to electricity. So what we do first is we go and make the maps, and then we go onto the ground, probe the soil, take the pictures from underneath the canopy, and we can figure out if you have diseases or pests plaguing your crops, and where exactly they're plaguing your crops within a day. Whereas right now, people are sending uh, PCAs or crop scientists go and walk the fields and it, it could take weeks, um, in some cases even up to a month. Oh. <laughs> right now, as you can imagine, there are a lot of factors that are limiting the capability for us to develop the prototype to its actual full market value potential, something that we would actually uh, allow farmers to use um, for us to provide our service of collecting the data. Yeah. Work out here, it can work I, anywhere. I think so, yeah. <laughs> but no, like, just like the tracks on a tractor, right, you know, the, the individual um, tracks will be able to like wrap over whatever it's going over. Yeah. Um, we designed it like partially like that. Um, we've got a prototype, it can fly, it can land, it can traverse fields. We've got a, several patents on the product as well where if anybody else, any other company in the world were to land and drive out into any fields, 
and carry out further analysis by probing the soil or by taking images underneath the canopy of plant, that would be an infringement in our technology. So we own that. My name is Josh Cross, and I am the Director of Economic Development for Paso Robles Chamber of Commerce. Well, the wine industry is our largest industry, not only here in Paso Robles, but here on the Central Coast. It represents about a $1.9 billion industry. So we have quite a lot of eggs in this one basket of our economy. And uh, one of the things we'd like to do and like to see here in Paso Robles is to diversify this economy to uh, kind of complement the wine industry. So we're really excited that uh, ag tech industries are looking at Paso Robles as a place to do business. The reason that Scientific Cal Ag won the Innovation of the Year Award and Mr. Hall won the Innovator of the Year Award for Paso Robles is because they're bringing the type of industry that we want to see here in Paso and no one else is doing that here yet. Uh, and so we're really pleased that he's uh, opening this whole new industry here and that's why we're here today is to kind of bear witness to the technology he's bringing. Yeah, we were we were toying with them uh, t about six years ago. Um, we were using them to fix wing drones, using them to scare off um, the birds that were coming in to eat the grapes. We we uh, put a silhouette of non-native predatory birds on there, um, and that was pretty successful. It was a fixed wing, so you'd program in the flight path and. Um, it would make its passes through the blocks. As I was leaving, they were working on um, using an aerosol can to deploy a pheromone for a vine mealybug. I mean, the honest truth is the technology has not changed massively here. It has changed some. Technology within the industry is changing massively, and drone technology is clearly a, a direction where it's going. We have not done an immense amount of it out here, and excited to see what this is. We're traditional in what we do, we're organic and biodynamic farmers and anything that can help us achieve our goals and, and get early warnings to issues would be a welcome addition to our team. And there's, there's a lot of reasons why that would be a useful tool. I mean, there's a lot of man hours, there's a lot of vehicle hours, there's a lot of fuel being burned, a lot of time and money and some pollution as well being generated by just driving, looking at blocks. If you've got a drone that can take some of that legwork out of it for you, why not? I mean, it seems like a, it seems like a dream in a way, you know, it's far-fetched, but looking at that machine, you see how it can, you can see how it works. You know, it's a, a politically charged climate at the moment and labor is becoming more and more of an issue. So any sort of technology we can employ to, you know, replace sets of eyes is going to help. Um, it's it's kind of, we got our backs up against the wall right now and, and having the ability or capability to, to use technology such as drones or autonomous tractors or electric, electric tractors, um, uh, it's, it's the future, it's here, it's now, and it's kind of where we need to be. I don't know that I would say that Paso Robles is working from a technical standpoint, it's working from a viticultural and winemaking standpoint because the people here are pushing envelopes and trying to find new ways to do things, trying to find better ways to do things. I think Paso Robles is pretty progressive. Um, was in my time here it always has been you know when we came we're early organic farmers in this wave of organics in Paso Robles and since then it's grown it's flourished and we're always pushing and it's no coincidence you know we've got Cal Poly just down the road so we see a lot of a lot of enthusiasm from those guys. Raise your children tall and proud 
Chase away the lightning clouds until you finally get old and gray. We all fade away. So NASA has, from its inception, been responsible for studying the planet Earth. In fact, we have a division called the Earth Science Division. First of all, drones are a tool, and they, they are a tool of, of humanity that is enabling us to do more than we could ever do without them. Um, and that's an important thing to recognize. Um, as far as what NASA's role is, uh, of course, we are involved as an agency in trying to um, figure out how to integrate unmanned aerial systems into the national airspace system. A lot of people don't remember, NASA is the National Aeronautics and Space Administration. First day in NASA is aeronautics. That's our foundation, that's our root right there. And so the question is, how do we increase the economy of the United States? How do we use drones to benefit not just farmers and ranchers, but all sorts of different industries across the United States? Well, we have to figure out how to integrate drones into the national airspace system in a way that's safe for passengers that are traveling on commercial airlines and civil airplanes and, and other things. Saying no to drones is not the right solution if you want to be competitive in a global marketplace uh, because every other nation on the earth is maximizing the utility of drones and it's incumbent upon the United States to try to compete in that global marketplace. As it relates to agriculture specifically, what, what we've been responsible for developing is the geofencing that a lot of these drones fly in. We want to make sure that the drone flies over the farmer's property within a box as far as the altitude and, and the, the latitude and longitude. Put a big box out there. And then the drone can do whatever it wants in that airspace that it's been assigned. And then we want to be able to communicate that airspace to all of the air traffic controllers that might have an interest in an airplane flying through it. We'll be flying at 320 feet above the ground at 35 meters per second. This should take about 10 minutes to finish. I think that the role that drones will have uh, in the coming future, whether it be five or 10 years from now, are gonna play a very important role in the way we make uh, management decisions here, um, more educated ones at that, and it's just gonna help us make a better, clear decision on how, um, how we farm here. So the drone we typically use out of the ranches is Matrice 100. Usually I can get about 100 acres in an hour done, as long as everything goes uh, correct. Before the iPhone, phones were pretty, pretty normal. The time you got an iPhone, you, you, you can't imagine everything, anything else. It's going to be the same thing in drones. The, the very first set of data we got from drones was average at best, um, but five years later we're, we're able to have a, have a very good look uh, at each and every field that we, we uh, capture and able to provide uh, a lot of data that we've, that we've found to be very useful um, to our growers and we're excited to see where this technology will lead in the future. Uh, I gotta be honest, I knew nothing really about growing plants or anything before I jumped into this. Be before, before we started working and learning about agriculture, my thoughts were as soil, water, seed, you grow something, right? I had no idea how much goes into it and over the last two years, I've learned so much, so much about this industry. I, I almost feel like I have a second degree in crop science. <laughs> And a huge appreciation for the amount of work and effort that goes into growing food for everyone. Why is agriculture an important industry? Because yeah. we've all got to eat and we've all got to be able to afford food and, and hopefully agriculture is a, a great way for change. I mean, we're at the forefront of, of a lot of things, a lot of how much water we use, the chemicals that we use. And having technology like this, this drone can reduce a lot of that by giving us more information, I guess. I mean, as I said, it's new to me, but agriculture is everything to us. I mean, you and I, we're not here without it.
production funding for American Grown, My Job Depends on Ag, provided by James G. Parker Insurance Associates, helping to protect and grow Valley Agribusiness in California for over 40 years. By the Gar and Esther Tatillion Charitable Foundation, a legacy of giving to support the people that make agriculture grow. Farms feed families, public television feeds minds. By Brandt Professional Agriculture, supporting the heroes that work hard to feed a hungry world every day. By Unwired Broadband, today's internet for rural Central California, keeping Valley Agriculture connected since 2003. By Harris Farms, a tradition of working forward to protect the future of water, ranches, and farms in California and beyond. And by Valley Air Conditioning and Repair, family owned for a half century, dedicated to supporting Valley agriculture and the families that grow our nation's food.